Um, gonna show you what's what's up today. Uh, fucking this is the doomsday list I'm on right now. Um, I'll show you a little bit different. I'm trying out empty the warrens again. Um, the there's this guy. I think he's from Texas, who puts up five O's on leagues occasionally, um, and did well in an SCG Classic, and uh, he always has empty the Warrens. I've tried it a lot in the past and never really thought it was worth the sideboard slot, but I'm trying it again just for the hell of it. I'm also taking some other pages out of his book um, and trying three Burning Wishes, even though I prefer the four. Um, three is probably enough, but I like being able to like wish for something and then still have plenty of business spells in my deck. Um, I'm also only on 16 lands. Um, I have also have, which is my own thing here, I have a preordain in here in addition to the brainstorms and ponders and such. Uh, that's a um, something of a a Japanese thing, some of the weirdo Japanese doomsday lists will like run a pre singleton preordain in place of the fourth lines eye diamond and like weird shit like that. Um but I think with sixteen lands and only eight fetches now instead of nine, there's an argument for that extra slot being another cantrip because the extra cantrip in addition to just being like like more con increasing your consistency, it does other things. It increases your potential to have like a turn two kill. So you to hit like the dark ritual doomsday lines eye diamond cantrip with two lands that kind of hand. Um, you have an extra cantrip, so more likely to happen. There's also the dark ritual doomsday cantrip divining top hands. So now you have another cantrip, more likely for that to happen. So fast kills are good. I've also put the Reign of Filth back in my deck. I've been playing without it for a while, but with, with the increase in like Delver and decks that play Days and stuff, Bug Delver, Bug decks that play Days, like Redukes, uh, Noble Bug deck. Reign of Filth, in addition to just being another ritual and helping you, um, like really make sure you have the resources to kill on turn three, which is you don't really want to be killing much later than that if you can avoid it. Um, it also helps you play through soft counters uh, by giving you extra mana. So, uh, no other major changes to the sideboard. Um, I picked up a Caracas online a while back when I was messing around with the white version of Doomsday, which I never made any videos about, but maybe I will. Um, trying it out in the board, because it hits a lot of stuff. It hits, um, like, Sneak and Show... Uh, gets a lot of targets out of Reanimator. Uh, can randomly be used against uh, Death and Taxes. Um, hits Leovold. So it's like a zero mana answer to Leovold, so it's pretty good. I actually tested it out in the main deck for a while as the 17th land, but uh, it was kind of wonky to have like effectively a colorless mana source in the deck. In the white version, real good, but the white version has its own problems. Maybe I'll talk about that some other time. Anyway, um, I meant to record a match live, but I forgot to hit record for the match. Uh, so instead, I'm just going to do commentary on the replay. Uh, I played against Tezzerator, a.k.a. Tezzerate Control, which is a really annoying deck because it has Chalice and Force of Will. So let's see how this went. So, here I was pretty confused, because he, they open with, like, a Leyline of the Void, which is not very common. Um, and I know that Eldrazi sometimes plays them on the sideboard, and so you, you'll you see that when they play the City of Traitors, I, uh, I thought I was, like, up against Eldrazi with main board Leyline to beat all the red-black reanimator decks. Uh, which is, would be pretty wild. But that wasn't what it was. Um, so, about my first play, my opening seven is like pretty alright. Um, if I draw a ritual, it is potentially a turn two kill. Um, so, depending on what my opponent's playing, I can just jam that. So, it's a decent hand, nothing crazy. 
um, I play out the Delta, and because I don't have anything worth doing on turn one, since I want to hang on to that cantrip to cantrip into my Doomsday Pile, I just leave the Delta uncracked. So, off of their city, they play a Chalice on one, which spurs me to fire off the Brainstorm. And I draw a lot of hot trash. But, I sort of, you can see, I sort of have an out because I can actually cast Doomsday on turn two because of the pedal. So I play out my Mana Rocks, and I just fire the Doomsday, and I build a somewhat unconventional pile, and I believe it is Decay, uh, Lab Maniac, Ideas and Bound, Probe, Probe. And I'm just going to let the rest of it play out, because you'll be able to see what happens. Yeah, right there was the pile. Oh, wait. Right there. Yeah. So... Uh, I'll just let let the rest of this play out so you can see what happens. I'll try and talk about it fast. So they play another Chalice on Zero. Not a problem. I don't have any Zero cost cards left in my, my deck. So we decay that Chalice, brainstorm into my Lab Maniac, putting the Ideas and Bound back on top, and just pass the turn again. They play some more stuff, play out a Tezzeret. Um... I draw, and I should win, but they have a force, and just force my ideas unbound. Not a problem, we'll try again next turn. I attack the Tezzeret so he can't ult it. Chalice comes in for 5 damage. Probe, he's got nothing. Probe again. Got him. Now, uh, for game 2, my sideboarding plan... So, I wasn't totally sure. I haven't played against a lot of... Um, Tezzerator. So I used a very Miracles-esque sideboarding plan where I side out my wishes and I bring in a good portion of my wish targets and all of my Abrupt Decays. The idea behind this board plan being that it's a prison deck with Force of Will or it's a, a blue deck with lock pieces, which is sort of what Miracles is like. Um, because they have counterbalance instead of chalice. Now, when I actually did my sideboarding, I probably should have brought in my Void Snare, because I didn't realize that the guy had, uh, had Lodestone Golem in his deck, which I probably should have known. But it ended up being okay. So he mulled to five and had the Ley Line in a Tomb that did nothing. Um... I probe and see a hand without colored mana. That was uh, Baleful Strix. Uh, Baleful Strix, Tezzeret, another land, I think. Some other card. I, I, I didn't see it. I forgot what it was. Oh, the Lodestone Golem. So I Cabal Therapy the Lodestone Golem. Because I can't decay that. I don't have a way to get rid of it, and it would make it a huge pain. I wouldn't be able to win through that, probably. Because it beats down very hard, and I wouldn't have a good way to get rid of it because I uh, sideboarded all my wishes out and didn't bring in the Void Snare. So, continuing on, now I play a slow game because they don't have any colored mana, so they can't really cast any of their spells. So I can afford to wait for a while until, because they both need, both their spells need double colored mana, a blue and a black. So, I just slow roll it, I draw that Infernal Contract, which I wanted because it will let me potentially get a huge card advantage over him. Get rid of the Chalice Probe. That uh, Echoing Truth that I saw was... Um, it, it's kind of like Abrupt Decay, where you can play around with the right sequencing. But I have like an excess of discard spells here. So I'd rather just play it out. I mean, get, I'd rather make him discard the Echoing Truth. So I do that, take the Echoing Truth. And then I play out the Divining Top. Because if he peels another chalice and puts it on one, I'm going to want that divining top out so I can dig without being able to cast cantrips. So now I therapy him again. I take the Tezzeret and I set up. So Doomsday is on top of my library with a decay beneath it. With that set up, if I 
have the opportunity to go off on my turn, I'll just go off. If I can't, I'll wait another turn, Decay a Chalice or Transfere or whatever the fuck he comes up with, and then go off. But he drew and played this Inventor's Fair, and because we'd seen his hand the turn before, I knew what he had and that the Inventor's Fair was his draw for the turn. And so I knew that the coast was clear. So we get him with a fairly basic contract pile, since I have two black sources, the double ritual. Um, and the tendrils is in my main deck, so I can't, like, wish for it. But you just play it out. Ba-boom, give him the drills. There it is. 